In this video, I want to show you how to create this perspective section using mostly Photoshop. This is part of our master sections course that we released a few years ago. And I love this style so much that I wanted to create a whole video around it and show you the tips and tricks we used to create this style. In our course, we also see two other different styles of how to create sections, but I'll tell you more about that later. Let's start. Okay, so first references. We always start with reference images. And for this section, I looked a lot at the Renzo Piano style sections. I, I love them, by the way, where you can see the blueprint style where there's also blue background and white line work, but also there is a very technical feeling to the section. It's also very informative. It has dimensions as well as important information about the building. But first, a coffee break. Now, even though the majority of this image is going to be done entirely in Photoshop, we do need a 3D modeling program to export our base section and our base images. In this case, I'm working on a SketchUp in AutoCAD, but if you use other 3D modeling programs like Revit or Rhino, you can also do the same. If you already have this part, you can skip to the section where we start in Photoshop. Now in SketchUp, I'm gonna create a section in a place that is visually interesting and shows the most important parts of the building. In my case, I decided to create a section in this area right here. I'm going to put the view in parallel projection and export the section as a DWG file because we're going to open this in AutoCAD. Now I'm going to add all of the technical details inside of AutoCAD. Since this is something the majority of you probably know how to do if you're watching a video like this, I just want to break down the steps really quickly and not get too much in depth over here. So first I started by organizing the main section cut line which is the most important line of our section, of course. I'll clean it up and make sure the line weight is thick so the cut is visible. I also added some detail on the slab structure, detail that I did not have in my 3D model, but it was easy to add in AutoCAD. Similarly, I adjusted the line weights of the drawings and I, and I always leave the thinnest line weights to the elements that are farthest from the section line and they will increase in line weight when they get closer so we have a sense of depth. Next, I'll start to add some furniture. You can use the furniture you have at hand or you can also download some furniture blocks from our resource library. Here, we imported some desks, lamps, chairs and many other things. Afterwards, add the technical details like axes, dimensions, floor numbers, etc. And finally, we just export this plan as a PDF and that's it. Now, this is our first important part. Remember that this section is a mix of technical information along with a 3D rendered feel. So we need to have a well done technical plan. Now let's create the second part, which is the 3D extrusion from the plan, just like it popped out of the paper. Now let's go back into our 3D modeling program. Here, I also want to speed up the process and show you the basic moves I did inside of SketchUp. First, I imported the CAD drawing onto SketchUp and started extruding the slabs and the walls. You might be wondering, Steven, well, you already have a 3D model. Why don't you just use it? Well, for this section, I really wanted to work with a clean 3D model and I thought this was an easier option. But if you're working on a, if you're working on a program like Revit, and your 3D model is very well detailed. You can just use the section box tool and export the 3D model as a section. This was just a personal preference of mine. Now, this is the model I created after extruding it. So if I show you the two 3D models side by side, the one I had originally with the section and the one I created for my technical plan, you can see more or less the difference in these two sections. This one has much more detail, of course. Now, after I have a 3D model of my section, I will create a plane on the background and place it beneath my 3D model. I'll click on the section and click on Align View. So from this, I will export three different views onto Photoshop and these views are very important. For the first style, I will go turn off the edges, put the section fill in white, section lines in white as well, and the background in white. Now, let's turn on the shadows, adjust the shadows, and save this as a scene. For the second scene, let's put the background in black. Let's turn off the shadows and call this object shadows and save it as a scene. And for the third style, let's change the front color to black, the section lines and fill to black, and the background to white. And let's save this as a scene as well. Now let's export these three scenes as a PNG file in high resolution. Then let's open Photoshop and import our files. Let's create a new file. I already have one created where I first imported my plans from AutoCAD it placed a background color. I have two plans that I, ex that I exported. One has the architecture and the other one has the dimensions. Now for my blue background, this is the blue that I used for this image. 
Now let's create a levels adjustment layer. Make sure you group these CAD files and with the levels adjustment tool, let's turn all of this into a white color. Now, since, since I want to give more depth to the image, with the lasso tool, I'll select the areas that are farthest away from the section and fill them with a black color and with a very low opacity, something like this. This is what it looks like before, and this is what it looks like after. Now, of course, let's group our layers. We should have the base, the base group, the shadow group, and the lines group. Now let's import the images we exported from SketchUp. First, we're going to import our object map and then the sun shadows and then the object shadows. So I'm going to group all of them and lower the opacity of the group. With this, I can press Ctrl T and adjust the scale and placement and align it perfectly to our technical plan. So you have to make sure this is correct. You may want to spend some time here, but Adjusting this scale uh, is very important. Now let's go to our section object map layer. Let's change the color to white. Let's go to image, adjustments, levels, and put it all white in the output levels. Now you wanna make sure all these are smart objects so we can go back to this at any time. Meanwhile, let's go to our object shadows layer. We're going to turn it on. And using our object map, I'm going to control click on top of the layer and this will create my selection. Now I'll go to the mask tool and this will hide everything else on this layer. I'll switch the blending mode to multiply and here we have the first base shadows for our 3D image. Now, although this looks really cool, we still have a long way to go. So let's continue. Now for the sun shadows, I'll use the same object map contour by hitting control click and hiding the outer part of the image. Here we have the shadows applied to our image and let's set this to normal and turn down the opacity. Next, let's duplicate the sun shadows layer and delete the mask. Let's turn off all the other layers for now. And with the magic wand tool and selecting the color range, we're going to select only the shadows. And as soon as we have our selection, I'm going to go to the 2D group. I'll create a new layer in the shadows folder and fill it with a black color. Now let's duplicate the shadow layer. And on the first one, I'm going to create a Gaussian blur and diffuse the shadows so it has a nice blurry effect. And of course, let's adjust the opacity. And for the second one, we're also going to apply a Gaussian blur, but this time a little bit less. So this is starting to look really cool, right? Now this image needs more shadows that make this look more realistic and have that clay rendering effect. So I'm going to go to the section object map, right click on the layer and turn on the trap shadow effect. Lower the opacity, increase the distance and adjust the angle. So if I turn off and on, you can see the impact they that these shadows have. It's very subtle, but, but it's necessary. Now, there's some areas where we have to add some shadows in a different way. For example, for the bottom of the slabs, I'll create some shadows. I'll use the lasso tool to select the bottom of the slabs. Now, after we have all the selection, I'm gonna create a new layer, paint the whole layer black with a paint bucket and lower the opacity to around 50%. Now our building looks like it popped out of the drawing, right? Now let's create some contact shadows that are just small levels of detail to give more realism. Here we just create a new layer, select a soft brush, black color, and a low opacity around 10 or 8%. And we're going to paint it softly where the building meets the paper. So this is a very artistic part of the process where we just paint very soft shadows and it may take you some time, but you have to be patient because this is the key to this image, the shadows. And as soon as you have all of these, your drawing should look something like this. Now, this is how it looks like before the contact shadows, and this is how it looks like after. It's a big difference, right? Now, let's add some people and furniture to add much more detail to our drawing. So first, I'm going to add all of the people to our drawing and place them in the same scale. You can get some people for free in the classic Paint Pimp by Drawing page, or you can also visit our resource library and download different types of cutouts and illustrations. So after I adjusted the scale, I will place them all around the model. I'll select half of the people and place them in a group. Next, I'll mask all these people out. And with the levels adjustment layer like we used before, we're gonna make them all completely white. And we're going to lower this group opacity. This will make them feel like they're part of the 2D drawing in the back. For the other half of the people, I'm going to create a different group and also turn them all white. 
So I'll merge the group and add a drop shadow to the people to make them stand out. This will have an effect of a 3D maquette people that also popped out of the drawing and it gives a sense of depth to the image. And we're going to do the same process but with our furniture from AutoCAD. We're going to import them, adjust the scale, and place them throughout our whole drawing. So details like people and furniture just add that extra level of realism to make this image so much better. So I spent a bit more time adding some extra details and this is how the section came out. Now, as I said at the start, this is just one of three different styles of sections that we see in the course. The first one is the perspective line section. The second one is a more conceptual isometric kind of section. And the third one is this blueprint maquette section, which I like a lot. So if you're interested in learning how to create these three different styles, there will be a link in the description in case you want to sign up for the course. Now, if you made it to the end, what do you think about this drawing style? Comment down below. Thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.